Hello, my dear Siamnetic amigos. Welcome to another isolated little episode of my saga of life of Championship Manager. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm going through Sporting Club de Braga first season, right? The first season of the original update. Doesn't matter if I'm using the GS mode or the original, the database is exactly the same. The only thing the GS mode does is updates the competitions as much as it can to the reality, to the current reality. I apologize henceforth, I'm not like streaming an entire save from the beginning because my life situation has changed a bit. But you don't have to go through that boredom, you don't have to go through that shit, right? I mean, I think I've earned enough credibility as well with other saves I've done to... So you guys know that I'm not fucking around. All I got is a really nice tactic called Raphael Style that I shall share with you eventually, I think, considering that all my online saves, solo games that I've done in the original database and other databases have been working like a charm, right? Tell me what you think. Anyway. What I'm going to point out here while I'm doing this first season save with Braga is the fact that, and this is a very relevant thing, right? It's Russia being banned 100%, like last place of the UEFA coefficients with zero chances, zero chances of putting a team anywhere, right? Which makes the Russian players, even if they're really good, very easy to sign if you are a a middle table, middle table plus team in a top league like Portugal, right? So this has been pretty easy to sign like Shalov from CSK Moscow for 1.1. Maybe I could have got him cheaper. I don't know, but it was it was fine. I mean Braga, to be to be fair, like these guys are filthy fucking rich. You can see that I have a 17 million negative impact in my. And my budget, and I still have 35 million pounds. So these guys have like 50 million pounds just to kick off. And they're SC Braga. I mean, you don't think SC Braga is a shitty little team, obviously. If you know anything about football in Europe at all, you'll know that they are a team that'll, that is going to hurt you if you, don't, if you don't respect them enough. Let's be honest. But still, it's a pretty damn good little thing. Anyway. So I have an A team and I have a B team playing in the second division B. Why have all the interest in the world to go up, right? So therefore, I signed a little bit more players than you see here, right? Because I wanted to fill up my B team with something just to keep, you know, just to keep the glory on going. And these guys in the second division next year, they won't go further than the second, but the second would be fine. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll point out like this Russian bug, it's not a bug, it is a thing, but it's, man, it really, like Braga, when I arrived here, this is the striker they had, Vitinha, that's it. The one and only, this guy, right? He's nothing transcendent, nothing special, and they had this guy, Miguel Fale, and my bees, I put it, I put it on my bees because, I mean... Come on, the guy is not exactly a god of the game, is he? But he's still putting up very good numbers in the second division B, which is fine. Eventually, I'll I'll sell him, and I'll point out like I signed this guy Judy, who I've had before in other saves where I'm like a weaker team. But this guy from eighty, he's actually pretty decent. He doesn't look like much because of the off the ball jumping finishing situation, but this guy. With his little passing and technique, determination, whatever. It's actually not too bad. If you are in a shitty team, I recommend take a look at this guy, right? But going back to my A's. Okay, so I got Shalov, right? 1.1 CSK Moscow. I mean, he's a he's a, he's a a very decent striker. Let's be honest. I got Sobolev, 1 million pounds from Spartak Moscow. Look at his numbers this season, right? Very decent signing, I would say, for a million pounds. This guy, I would say, is one of those that just keep an eye on him. Henceforth and forever, Nico Leach. I've seen this guy leaving Mornar in the first season for 70k, right? So this is a very, very, very deadly striker for a very budget price that I recommend anyone that plays this game and likes the inferior division type of challenge to keep an eye on because if you can get him, you'll be happy at it. Right, 19-year-old Montenegro, 
cheap as hell. Really good numbers in the right places. Not perfect. Right off the ball, if it was 20, it would be Tsigalko. But he's super. Still, very deadly. I mean, I signed this guy in January. He's not disappointing thus far at all. Right? Then I have to say, like, Braga has this guy. He was a 16-year-old when you start the game. Now he's 17. Who cares? He made him in November. But this guy is like an attacking midfielder left. Don't be fooled by what I have here. Because this is a product of my training. Even though he's unhappy here and there, as you can see, he can cope with it. And he adapts, right? And I have him here as forward center. And cent in the setting of my attacking players but with the adaptation to the forward center. Working like a charm, right? He's adapted. Ricardo Huerta doesn't even complain, but he's not adapted yet. But he doesn't even complain. He's my captain. He's been playing well. I'll keep him there. He's playing in the midfield there, right? You got Rodrigo Gomez is already here. Rodrigo, Rodrigo Gomez is a really good player. Really good player, but I would say that this guy is a little more of a freaky guy, right? I've had Ayadi and other, other, other saves from AAK. This Swedish dude is uh, absolutely decent. Very good. And as you can see, I signed a few guys. So I signed these two Soviets here because I needed strikers and I got them. And I had an eye on Nikolic from previous saves, right? I adapted this guy into the to be the bench of Ruiz. Questionably the first guy, probably the first guy, let's be honest. Gomez, Ayari, Sumare, Andre Orta is already here. He's Ricardo Orta's brother, for all I know, right? Sumare is the defensive midfielder. Karpov, I'm adapting him to a defensive midfielding position. Okay? So Karpov has got, like, all the technique, all the passing. I mean, he's got really nice attributes for a central defender as well, and he's been playing there at the moment. But next season, I'm thinking about... Dodging this guy, Lucas Mineiro, and having Karpov as an option for Sumare. Who knows? Karpov will take his place. Anyway, when the game started, who did I sign until the end of the transfer market in, G in August? I got Ayari. I got Max Ahrens. I mean, I needed a right back, and I could just sign this guy to Braga. Can you imagine? Like, I just signed him. 14 million pounds. Who cares? He's here. He's mine. Ain't going nowhere. Not for less than 32 million if you just want to pay it. But he's spot on the best, like, right back of the game almost. So, happy days. I'm happy as. All right. Got Subolev. Got this sub goalkeeper, this Georgian guy who's in the bench. Got people for the, the B team because the B team needed some love. Let's be honest. I wanted the B team to thrive. So, I got some guys in here just to make sure... That as stupid as my assistant manager is, there's no way the B team is not going to go up. You have to do this in Championship Manager 102. Unfortunately, but if you do it, it's definitely going to work. I got this guy for a symbolic amount of 170k to be the sub left back. This Durmisi, and I have Ruben Vinagre, who I signed for 800k from Sporting. Cheap ass, as you can see. But I had a left back, and here he is, Sakaida. The problem with Sakaida is he's 32 years old, so I cannot rely on this guy for much longer. I needed someone. When I saw the opportunity for Vinagre, I went for him. As you can see, they're very similar. One is 32, the other one is 24. So I had to do the, I had to make my options, I had to do my choices, and there it went. Uh, what else could I do, right? What else would you do? Rest-wise, like, Braga's team is pretty decent. I just patched it up here and there where I need it, trying to adapt some guys. Rest-wise, the training is the same, just adaptations here. Goalkeepers, what else can I tell you here? B team is doing fine. Ten points ahead of the second, so no dramas there. Great, great stuff. We're moving up. Happy days. Strasbourg has a bid, apparently. I'm negotiating for two and a half because I, don't, I just don't want to sell him. I don't need money. And my B team needs a decent striker, so why would I do that, right? There's no need whatsoever. So it wasn't too bad, right? We spent 27 million in the end. We got 11,750 back. We sold a lot of stuff that we thought we didn't need. We kept a good 
Braga base. This is a very good Braga base, I would say. And we're still here. So as you can see my calendar now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six games, including the UEFA Cup, channel, uh, UEFA Cup final, the Europa League final, against Manchester, Manchester United. Oh. Ah, that's all right. Okay. So this, I think, is the context. I want to point out... Uh, in this in this particular championship manager version, the updated version, right, the October 2022, which is what we are playing now if you are updated, players like Sidufini, this guy becomes an absolute monster of the game. He's 16 years old. He's in Genova, right? You can put him with Nikolic there. You want to get these guys. You want to. This Fini is bloody deadly. He's a great player. Keep an eye. This Lamini Amal from Barcelona, he's an absolute monster as well. He's he's crazy good. Like, I have nothing else to say. You look at him, you get him on your short list. If you can, please do sign him. This Wahi from Mont Montpellier already signed for Newcastle. I didn't decide to fight him up, fight him off. Regardless, very decent player. Gedar from Lecce. I would say this central midfielder is. Freaking fantastic as well. I've had, had him in other saves. Not bad at all. I got Siegenkopf signed for the end of the year. I'm going to do the same thing as I'm doing with Orta or my uh, attacking midfielder left. I'm going to adapt him to the center. I think it's going to be worth it because he's absolutely fucking fantastic, right? And fight for that. What else do we have? Oh, Dari Wesugo, man. If you can sign this kid, just sign him. He can go to you in the first season. No problem whatsoever. You just, you know, if I'm Braga, it's a little bit harder because they consider me a rival. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But awesome. Martin Neto. Need a central midfielder. It's going to cost you pennies. This guy, in the end, costs you pennies because Benfica, for some reason, does not play with him. Maybe it's because of Enzo. I don't know. But Enzo, Esugo are like already a bulldozing midfielder. Just the two of them. They are absolutely fantastic. The Macho de Jalo is another one. You keep an eye on this kid because this kid becomes really relevant. Really good. It's fantastic. There are more, of course. I have this Joelson Fernandez who was in Sporting when he started Sporting B. Attacking midfielder as well. Right or left. If you play with, with that that type of tactic, please do. He's a, he's a really good player. He's a really that. Damn good player. I got Divev there on the short list. I got Tajir. The usual, right? Divev. This Chisumba is already signed for me. As you can see in the end of the year. And I have this goalkeeper as well. Pahindir. Who's absolutely fantastic. But I will say that this Leandro Bray right here from Boca Juniors. He is so good. This kid right here. Keep an eye on him from day one. Leandro Bray is so good. Fucking good. He is what a goalkeeper. For and maybe you can get this guy for some peanuts or not, but he is fantastic. I have a goalkeeper coming my way, it's fine. I got Mateus. I'm not exactly an, an innocent little club here that is like, ah, oh, what is going on? Anyway, let's see what, what's gonna happen until the end of the season, right? I'm using my Raphael style tactic. As I said, it's working like a fucking charm. And all my online saves, not just solo. Solo is solo. The diamond would be fine. But I have a little revamped diamond as well. Anyway, I will update that shortly in another video. But for now, let's see if we can actually win the UEFA Cup in the first, le in the first season against Manchester United. Because thus far, it's been easy peasy, lemon, bloody squeezy. We lost this game 3-2. Abnormal circumstances. West Ham, but then we played West Ham at home. Reality came back, even though they scored. They shouldn't have, but I mean, <laughs> Braga deserved to win, let's be honest. All right. And here we go. The league is mine. The league has been mine for a while now, like for maybe like, maybe since like fixture 28. There are 34. These are, this is an 18, 18 team league. There are 34 fixtures, so I've been a, I've been the champion for a while. I have I am not defeated this year, and my my goals are really good. Like 
this tactic, I, I think it's been working really well and I'm willing to do a little video and make it available for, you, for all you guys very shortly. So you guys can enjoy it as well. It's like my diamond, but I just literally dodged my central midfielder here. Adapted it to a tactic that has two forwards as well. But but keeping the diamond and nah, whatever. It's, it's here. There's a few inspirations, including my friend's tactic from Pedro. There's a... Pedro, Pedro, who I play with uh, all the time, Spooken. Uh, I have another one there that was uh, some fucking, I don't know, 4 3, whatever, something 2, and it just works. So it's not too bad this far. It's been working really well. I will make this available. This one is Defo, a 100% creation of mine. Weather was dry, they're coming direct. I have to be careful with this. Their tactic eh, is a little bit packed in the middle. I might have to convert this into direct um, to direct passing, but we'll see. Not comfortable as well. I have Vitinha playing like uh, Sobolev and Nikolic not even playing this game. And Nikolic should be playing, to be honest. But I want to sell a Vitinha in the end of the year. And this is a league game, so I don't really care if I lose this game. Let's be honest. I, I, I don't want to lose it. If I lose it, who cares, right? I'm champion. I have more interesting games ahead. I got a, a second semi-final fixture against Porto, I think. Stuff like that. Anyway, Viting showing me that he corresponds and I can actually get a penny out of him in the end of the year, which is the bottom line here. That's what we want. I'm going to put Roger Fernandez off the bet for Ricardo Orta. Mateus is going to be the captain, which is fine. He's got influence five, 15, sorry. Could be better, could be worse, but uh, yeah, that'll do. That's not going to be the reason why I'm going to lose. I don't think so. Not because Mateusz became the captain. This guy's still going the same. Hugo Gomez is just low physically, but he's all right. Viting is all right. Ruben is all right. I mean, everything, everyone seems to be all right. Resume. I don't want to particularly do any sub if the guys are not playing bad. Or they're not injured. If they're all right, they're all right. But my goalkeeper is playing a nine, which is not a great sign for me. I mean, in the sense that these guys could have actually hurt me big time. Like so, as I as I suspected, like this this, this little three five two tactic they have, and that's the thing I'm gonna praise about this uh, latest update is that the tactics are really good. Like they're really good. They're not like all my Raphael style type of thing, but they are really good. They're decent. They make you think. At least it's not as boring as it used to be. The problem is, it's they are ruled by the machine. And the machine is not exactly like super intelligent, is it? That's the problem, I think, that overall the game has. And the reason why I play GS mode is because he updates the competitions as much as he can. Because the database is exactly the same of what you find on Champman. And I like Champman. I have nothing against them whatsoever. But I would love if they would just send the update with, you know, more realistic scenario to the one we have right now. And they just don't do it. Therefore, I'm like, hmm, a bit boring. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. You know, I mean, I, I'll play it if there was nothing else, but if there's something better available, why wouldn't I? So GS Mode, go for it. I think you should totally download that. If you just YouTube GS Mode, you'll find it. Publicity to Giovanni Santana, who's not even my friend. And I have nothing to gain from this, but credit, credit must be given where credit is due. And I'll say that. Anyway, first of May, apparently a little bit of a long update. Whatever is going on, okay, Tuesday. And we're playing the second leg. We won away to Porto. 2 0. As you can see, I, I'm trying to sign Endrick, right? Because why not? I mean, if I could get that guy, get rid of Vitinha, that'd be fantastic. I would I would have a really, really unbelievable bunch. So Vitinha scored. Shalov didn't play that well, but again. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry, but I'm not sorry. I'm just saying, like, nah. 
Nah. Sorry, man. Anyway, we'll try this as it is. They got Danny Olmo there, but Nielsen. Danny Namaso. Whoever this guy is. I've never heard about him in Porto ever. Well, Danny, Ol Danny Olmo is a different story. But they're not exactly a weak team, are they? They're not exactly, like, totally stupid. Porto as a very decent team, and Porto and Benfica, honestly, as the game progresses, they, they never lose themselves too much. They're, they can always put a first 11 in front of you that can, that can scare you a bit. Again, the AI is ruling the show, it's not one of us. As I say, like, I'm only comfortable to even post this, these tactics that I, that I develop when I'm playing online, because otherwise, what's the point? It's just me playing against the machine. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? You will always rule, even with a diamond or whatever I put avail I have available for you guys. You will be the heroes in your own save, even with updated uh, databases. Unless you're totally useless at choosing players, which I don't believe you are. I mean, come on. If you follow this channel, you already have a good grasp of what's going on. This is not Championship Manager for babies. This is for people that play the game and, you know, just want a real view of what's going on and... What can we do, right? We can't do much when it comes to the mechanic, the essential mechanics of the game. It is what it is, and it's not going to change, I don't think, until someone just grabs the matrix of the, the formula itself, whatever, and just changes it. But until that moment happens, like, it's all, you know, it's the, the mechanics are the same. You're going to have to respect the same thing. There's not much you can do. I just ch changed the striker because, yeah, why not, right? I still use Rodrigo Gomez, as you can see, but the guy that should be playing, I think, in my eyes, instead of Rodrigo, maybe it should be Ayati. Just saying, right? We are in the final of the cup against Benfica. I don't know how that screws up our calendar, but at least it's after United. It's not that bad. Okay, we got three games in front of us, and one of them is really interesting right now. So I didn't want to sell Quaresma to me because I am a rival. Arrival, right? Sporting, right? So there you go. Sporting considers me a rival. Fair enough. We'll take that as a compliment, I suppose. Even though I don't see them as a rival, I see them as a feeder. They have a lot of stuff there that I'm interested in. And you're going to get it. Okay, this guy is injured for a month, as you saw. Or not, right? What's going to happen here? I'm not going to put Dromisi there playing... When I have Sakeda here in the B team ready to rock and roll, I'm gonna put Sakeda. The end. Injured for a month, you're not gonna play the end of the the, the rest of the, the season, so sorry, my friend, you're out. These guys can go. I'm gonna put Vitinga and Sobolev because that's how I roll. I'm gonna put Fernandez here for Huish. I'm gonna put Tayari, as I said before. He should even be playing, to be honest with you. I think he should. Max Aarons is Max Aarons, and we're going to play Benfica go away. No dramas here, no point in executing rotations. Weather is wet, direct we go. No man marking in this scenario. I have been feeling... I mean, I could have I could have man marked like my... The, um, the strikers, or, or basically saying like I could have used my... Um, could have used my central defenders, but I wouldn't go further than that. Because I don't think that with this tactic, if I dedicate my fullbacks to marking, it's actually going to work very well. So that's maybe just my thing, but whatever. A little bit of a change in mentality when it comes to that. Well, we are undefeated thus far in the league, and we do not want to lose today. Ayadi got a red card, though which is pretty annoying, and now I got Aaron's injured. Maybe for the final of all the finals I have ahead of me. And Dinesh Pinto is not even in the same planet as him. He's alright, he's 22 years old, but fuck this, I mean. Comparing this with Max Aaron's? Let's not pretend here, right? He will do for the bench if he doesn't play, basically, or plays in the cup games. Something like that. But anyway. And we're still going to beat Benfica. Anyway. With minimal effort, I would say. Oh, he saved the freaking penalty. Okay, fair enough. 
Anyway, this game was irrelevant. Let's be honest. The the relevance here is the injury of Max Aaron's. Rodrigo, I'll get over that. But Max, but that was a bad ass. Two weeks. Two weeks. Might be might be deadly for him. Unfortunately. We shall see, but it might be deadly for the man. <sighs> see how we go. So Oliveira is back. So I'm going to put this kid in the bench. Should I put this kid in the bench? I don't know. He's going to go in the end of the year anyway. Just trying to bulk him up. Make him worth something. But as my ghost to off and I'm sure I'm not going to cry about that. I'll get someone better in the future. Ban for two matches as well. Okay, so that's the end of the Portuguese League season for Ayati for sure. What I do about that? Now Shalov is injured for some reason as well. And Rumisi is injured. Okay, so the game is trying, trying. They are trying. Hopefully they will not succeed, but they are trying. Playing against Famalicao. All right, see what we can do. Coming like this, I'm going to mend mark there. The captain is Orta, obviously. He's got 20 influence, so there's a no-brainer. 2020, that's 20, right? Can't get much more than that when it comes to candidating to be a captain. And he's been here for a while. Let's be honest, so... Well done, my friend. Money cow. This allowed. Doesn't really matter. Checking out my injuries. There's nothing going on. I don't think. Oh. You got to be thinking injury, even though he doesn't show it. Stamina must be amazing. Okay, so Karpov might go in. I'm going to put Nikol each. With pleasure. I'm going to put Nico, Nico Leach with pleasure. My friend Roger Fernandez. He's, man, this kid is just bound for greatness, right? It's unbelievable. Ruiz is there, but let's be honest. Let's be honest, guys. Wow, I got a lot of... Well, the team has almost qualified the B team, but I've got a lot of defensive injuries. A lot. They reject the bid for Andrik. Let's get going for 21. I don't care if I spend 30. Of course. Why would I? If I could get that guy. Awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Goalkeeper is sorted out. I mean, yeah, I'd, Andrik would be just absolutely spot on. That's not mine, thank Lord. Braga wins 3-0, and they are champions, and they are promoted. There you go. One last problem. Two weeks, two weeks, ten days. What is ten days? Ten days as you're out of the Europa League final. I'm going to lose the Europa League. Let us not pretend here. Without Vinagre, Aarons, my two fullbacks, basically. Nah, I don't think I'm going to one of them is okay, but the right back, like Aaron's, is just not replaceable. How am I going to replace that? I can't. I needed to have God in the bench, like, quite literally. Because Aaron's is Aaron's. I mean, my, my, my sub right back is, is, is a joke in comparison. Like, there's nothing I can do about it. So, move on. United still has to beat me. As I said, maybe Braga, if they, if Braga, if United falls asleep, wrong day, wrong time to fall asleep, they will get fucked by me. We shall see. So far here in the league, and we're playing against the second place Porto, which is my team. The team I support when I'm not supporting is Trilidad Madura, basically. They are the ones... They are 
winning without any even breaking a sweat, I suppose. It's been pretty damn easy, hasn't it? I'm keeping an eye to see if there's no one that I really need to replace. Because after this, it's final. There's no coming back. And red card for Vienna. Never a good thing. I'm gonna take Rodrigo. No, I'm gonna take... Who am I gonna take? I think Alic ain't playing shit, but Subolev has been playing the whole game. Sure. See how we go. I'm not expecting to hammer them for nothing. Well, we'll see. Da 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 da. 34th game, yeah. This is the last game of the season. We have two finals ahead of us. So, first season with Braga. Straight line, believe, believe it or not. But it's, I think the difference is so staggering that. And the way you saw me playing against Porto and Benfica, I mean, if you guys have doubts that I'm deservedly so the champion with this amazing world record, you're crazy, right? But it's up to you. Okay, I'm gonna discipline this guy. Jalo's release clause has been activated. Look at the release clause. How am I not going to sign this 20 year old kid? Of course I am. Even if he's for the B teams, which is not gonna be. But even if he was, I would, obviously. He would be a god in the second division. All right. Wednesday is coming. If we lose, we lose. That's that's life. I think we've been pretty lucky in the in the previous episodes we've had of Championship Manager. Been winning basically all the finals we've had. Can't complain too much about it if we lose. Ayati is gonna play this game. I don't care. Judge me all you want. Rest wise, team is decent. Ricardo Worth Ayati. Sobolev and Vitinha. I'm gonna go for it. Go for it off the bat, yeah. This is the, the shame. If I could have this, right? If I could have this instead of this, that would be spectacular. This guy wants to be paid what he deserves, but he's gonna be sold as the season ends. So like in two games, I'm gonna sell this guy. Why am I gonna sell Mateusz? I told you before. Because we have Pahindir coming to the team. And wow. Right? Checking short, no man marking in this scenario. Let's pray. See what happens. We do not have the top, 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 top team we wanted, but. And Chalov is not an option either. He's injured. Vinagre is injured. Chalov is injured. Aaron's is injured. I mean, those are three guys that would be playing this game, no problem, like, pfft. Yep, off the board, playing. We are winning 1-0, Vitinha there. Got a goal. Vitinha's gonna be sold. Hopefully I can sell this guy and, and get Hendrik in. So I'm gonna sell him, if I can get Hendrik. Brutal, imagine. Goodbye, Vitinha. Couldn't care less about your existence. We cannot clinch this game, but we are fucking all over them. Like, oh, Braga is winning. Yeah, what a surprise. Fuck. Let's be honest. Ricardo Duarte is the one questionably playing shit. So I have to keep an eye out for this. This allowed goal to I already. That is absolutely annoying. I'm gonna have to take that captain out of the way. He's not having his day. Flex. Oh, we're even. How the hell did they equal the game so well all of a sudden? Is this guy injured? Is there anything going on that I'm not aware? What's going on? They all seem to be here and happy and productive. I don't know. I gotta make some subs here, I think. You're right. They look like they could hurt me very much. Hmm. 
What am I gonna do? I'm gonna put Nico Leach. Shall I put Nico Leach though? Yeah. Nico Leach, Rodrigo Gomez, pray to the gods. Oh, come on! Second Dizzle out! Oh, fuck, we won. We won fair and square, but United didn't stand a chance, and Lunus Kairu, who's my original left back in this save, and he's amazing. I just put him in the B team because I wanted to conserve him in the club, keep that quality, but I had Vinagre to play. Men of the match. First season. Boom. Raga, unstoppable. Champions League next year. Champions of the UEFA Cup. Man, it, the way f this way fuck up with Braga, I'm telling you guys, this was one of the easiest fucking journeys of my life. It was so fucking easy. You would not believe. The league was a joke as well, as you saw, but the way fuck up, man, everyone I played against, I just fucking... This West Ham, I guess, it's the worst example, but still, I dominated the two games. But it was just so, so, so me. Fiorentina disappeared like they weren't even there. Betis, same story. Or zero one one. I mean, it was just so easy. It was brutally easy. Oh, there's there's Endrick, and you guys are witnessing this as well. So no way I'm gonna sign Endrick on this release clause. Obviously, I'm not a I'm not a, I'm not that stupid. Even though you guys might think it. Three year contract, just like that. Top salary, top release clause. Come on, baby. Come on. Ah, uh, this guy is suspended. That's annoying. I'm gonna put that kid. He's really good. He's here from the beginning. It's Bruno Rodriguez, 21 year old. Trustworthy, 100%, no doubt. And this guy goes here. This guy goes there. Shalov is gonna play. Actually, gonna put Shalov and Nikolic. And I'm probably going to start the Vitinha process. What? No, not loan. Why would I? Why would I loan this guy? Come on, there has to be people interested in this guy. There's no way. Ricardo is the one. Not planning on selling him, and he's probably going to adapt as well to when it. Attacking midfielder, slash forward, right, left, center, everything. So he's going to be awesome. I might get rid of Huish. That's probably who I'm going to get rid of because I have Roger and I will have Ricardo to play there. And if I have my dear friend Enric and probably Shalov, Nikolic, or Sobolev, doesn't even matter. Whoever's in better form. I'm going to be fine. Defense is really good as well. I have nothing to repair there whatsoever. Okay, no goals. It's a bit of a... a bit of a boggy game, isn't it? A bit of a shitty... Well, it doesn't go left or right. Nikolic is going to go. I'm going to put Sobolev. Russian duo up front. See if that works. Just me though, but no, no end result, no end product. Elton Light is in goals and he's shining like a diamond. And get through that guy. Ricardo, Ricardo. Okay. If I take retreat, no, I'm gonna take maybe Huish. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna take Luigi. I'm gonna put Roger. The superstar child. And believe. Believe. Ooh. A do a little. Fuck me in the face situation. Okay, this guy is gonna. No, he's not. I needed my friend Ayati here in the bench. Just gonna put Vitinha there. Fuck okay. it. I'm gonna lose. Uh, won the UEFA Cup, lost the Cup, but like, come on. This is my sin for the whole season? Like this? Oh, maybe not. Penalties. Sure, they are defined. I already have that thing defined from halfway through the season, I would say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah.
Oh, you scored. I won. Oh, okay. Justice has been used. Dinish Pinto. There you go. Aaron's sub. We won fucking everything again. Okay. Portuguese Cup, Europa League, League. It's all ours, man. So we're going to go into preseason mode. I'm going to see if I can actually sign Andrik before I sign out. I do? Awesome. Awesome. Gonna have some fun next year in the Champions League for sure. Aaron's praised, yes, even though he's injured, sure. Some guy that goes back to the B team, yay. That guy isn't happy now with the training, but he's not really. He's not. Brentford wants me team it for 4.2. I see. Well, goodbye. Let us believe. Andrik is mine. How fucking clinical is that? So we got Endrick, right? Just live with that. It, this is first season fucking Braga. We got rid of Vitinha. So next year we'll have Nigolic, who's still developing into a god. Chalov, Sobolev, and the good old... The good old for 21 million pounds. Andrik from Palmeiras, 16 years old. Unbelievable. Fucking god of the game. Awesome. So, I'm gonna save it here. Why not? Might continue, but for you guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. It was a pleasure to come back and show you something. Hope you enjoyed my thoughts. I'll see you soon. Until then, adios. Bye.